Hello, my name's Suckleberry, and uh, I got my little brother Rocco here recording. We've uh, made a H bridge circuit, and um, we've got an Arduino here. Uh, part of our old roommate's bike, and a little pinion gear that drives it attached to a, a motor. We've got a little potentiometer back here as well. Um, Basically, the potentiometer is a variable resistor. We're giving it uh, zero volts and five volts, and we're reading in an analog signal. So if you look at the computer screen, when, well, I guess you couldn't see both at the same time, but that's all the way to the right. Okay, now look back over here. Um, that's at zero degrees. We've got a little pointer here. Now when we turn this, if you look at the screen, the numbers change. So it's 520 about. Now look back over here. Um, we turn it more. We keep going. And we can go all the way up to uh, zero, or down, sorry. So all the way down is zero. And um, when we turn it up, um, we basically decrease or increase the resistance, uh, changing that analog signal coming from the potentiometer and going into the Arduino. So with that input, we can make decisions um, in our code written on the Arduino to drive pins. Um, in this case, we've, we have the pin 6 and 11. Um, connected together so um, when the contraption is up here we say go left so turn on power to either these two or these two to make it go this way and then when it's down here we make it go right so our code wants it to stop at 180 degrees here um, and it's with plus or minus 10 degrees, it's a very robust code, so it doesn't work too well, it needs some work. But anyways, um, <clears throat> getting back to this H-bridge circuit, we have about 11.3 volts there, and um, if we want to drive the motor one way, we have to um, turn on, let's, let's say these two green ones are turned on, okay? So we're getting five volts from the Arduino, 20 milliamps. Um, one signal's coming in here, and um, it's going through this resistor, and this is an optical isolator. It's really cool. It's basically, um, you send enough juice, see it has a ground here as well, into these two pins, or across them, um, to turn on a little LED inside. The little LED flashes over here and um, decreases the resistance between these two pins um, on the other side. Once the resistance is decreased, these wires are essentially connected. So it's like a switch. Um, now, once these are connected, this is a ground. So all black wires are ground for convenience. So here's an extremely basic circuit diagram of the H-bridge. Um, we have our battery over here, motor, and uh, the circuit. So you can think about it as a number of switches. And if these two switches are on, the motor is going to spin one way. Let's say it spins this way because the current is connected and it's flowing through here through here and then into, let's say this is um, one side of the motor, like the black wire or whatever. It's flowing in there and then making the motor spin, coming out, flowing through here and back to there, okay? So now, if these two switches are closed here and here, the motor is going to spin the other way. Um, because exactly the opposite's happening. The current's coming from here 
and it's spinning through the other side of the motor and making it spin the other way and it's flowing back. Okay. Now this H-bridge circuit diagram has a little bit more to it. Um, the way I've arranged it is the same way I have it set up over here. Okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but I have two PNPs, and if you look over here, those two PNP transistors are on the high side, so they're at 12 volts. Okay, so if you look, you can see 12 volts is running, and it's actually running into the emitter, and then out of the collector of the PNP. Same thing, that's another PNP, into the emitter, out of the collector. Now if you look over here, emitter collector. So in a PNP transistor, current flows from the emitter to the collector. Okay. And a PNP transistor is turned on when you um, ground it. So when you ground it, it's on. Okay. So now back to the optical isolator. When we send this ground to the base of the PNP transistor, it's on. And it's essentially a switch that lets current flow through here and um, to the motor. And then um, if the other side's on, uh, back to the battery. So um, again, these are switches, so if these two are on, uh, the PNP and then PN are on, the motor will swim, uh, these two specific transistors are on, the motor will rotate one way, and then if these two are on, the motor will rotate the other way. So the PNP transistor is turned on with a ground, and the NPN transistor is actually turned on with some current flowing into it. So with the ground, um, the current is actually flowing out of it. So a small current flows from the emitter to the base when this is grounded. Because this is 12 volts. So if I hook up a ground over here, I'm going to get some current flow. And that small current flow allows a larger current flow here. So this is the current that's going to be flowing from through the circuit from the battery, uh, battery's voltage. Um, now, the NPN transistors are a little bit different in that um, we're getting five volts from the Arduino. That's our microcontroller for this project. And so this current is flowing into the system here, like that. A small current, uh, about 20 milliamps. Okay, so that's the current from the Arduino. And this current also lets a larger current flow down, okay? So, um, and I wouldn't hook these two up at the same time unless I wanted some fireworks. I'd, I'd send signals from the Arduino uh, to this one, and then from the Arduino to the optical isolator to make the optical isolator um, ground this one out. So I do that at the same time and then I do that at the same time. So, uh, and with these, um, these are NPNs, the current flows from the collector to the emitter. So that's exactly opposite the PNPs. And the optical isolator is actually, uh, if you see here, it's actually a PN junction. So current flows from the collector to the emitter. One of my major problems uh, when I was doing this project was I wasn't fully saturating the transistors on the high side. Um, this is again the PNP transistor on the high side and in order to fully saturate a transistor you need to have a specific amount of current flowing back, in this case for the PNP, back um, to the ground. Um, and this is actually a pretty, this PNP has um, a pretty low HFE. And HFE is the value that relates these two currents. I need, 
at least um, 20 times less current here flowing back than I have here in order to fully saturate or open it. Um, and if you don't open it, this transistor will get really hot and it'll act like a resistor. And they're meant to dissipate some heat. They have some um, pretty good properties. I, I found out firsthand they, they dissipate quite a lot of heat with the heat sink on the top. Anyways, um, in order to fully saturate that, you have to do a little bit of math. Um, it's pretty simple. You find the HFE value on the back of your transistor and you can see right here in this case uh, mine was 20 so I needed at least um, 20 times less than um, the current that I wanted so I wanted uh, an amp and a half through the motor um, so if I divide an amp and a half by 20 I get this value so that's the value that I need to be flowing back into the base um, now, the battery that's attached to this transistor, um, we're basically grounding it out over here. Uh, they're a little bit different than the PNPs, but we're, we're grounding it back to this battery. Um, so we're effectively setting up the whole voltage on that transistor. So that's 11.37 volts, and across most transistor you have about seven tenths of a voltage drop. So um, Ohm's law rearranged to yield this. Um, and if we take that 0 0.07 from the voltage that we have divided by the current that we need, we can find the resistor. Now this resistor belongs right in front of the base of the transistor and um, the current again flows through that transistor, or th through this uh, resistor, um, and back here. Now, we had initially put on resistors that were too large. Um, those resistors being too large didn't allow enough current to flow back through them. Um, so these transistors weren't fully saturated and they were getting hot and we weren't getting enough power. Okay, so now just to run through the uh, NPNs real quick because they're a little bit different. Um, again, we need an amp and a half through the motor. The HFE value is 20 to 70, but I think most of them are about 60. Um, I divide the 1.5 by the 60, we need that current. Now this current, again, is flowing for the NPNs, it's flowing from the collector to the emitter, and it's coming into the base. So this is a 5 volts signal from the Arduino, um, and this 5 volts minus the 0.7 voltage drop divided by the current we need gives us an approximate value of 172 for our resistors. Now, they don't make 172 ohm resistors or uh, 142 ohm resistors, but they do make 100 ohm resistors, and to be conservative, to make sure these transistors are fully saturated, we threw a small resistor on there, and uh, it works very nicely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, the um, project will finally be hooked up. Now, initially, I'm just going to start it at 180, where we know it's going to be off and I have the battery disconnected right now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. No sparks, that's good. All right. So now if I move it this way, it'll try to go back that way. And it'll keep trying to go back. It's trying to get to 180, but again, um, the code needs some work, to say the least. Um, but you can see it's working. It'll probably do that for a while. And none of the transistors are getting very hot um, because they're all saturated. We're, we have them on completely. And that's it. Thank you for watching my video. Have a nice day.